All right. <laughs> we can start now. Yeah. <laughs> can we start? All right. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your guidance, your blessings uh, that you pour out on us. We thank you uh, for being with us in the, the trials of life and the struggles and um, for the peace that you give us as we as we endure those. And um, those times that we can't always see your hand or understand why things are happening to us, give us faith to trust in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank so. You. We have three chapters to cover tonight, so it's good that we're starting on time. <laughs> <laughs> for us, we're starting on time for us. <laughs> we may not get through all three chapters tonight. All right. It'd be a surprise. Um, so, <clears throat> starting with Genesis chapter 39, would somebody like to read? Now, Joseph had mm-hmm. been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, is that how you pronounce yep. it? An Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought himself for the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar uh, put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to him his to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had both in the house and in the field. So he left he left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns he has <coughs> entrusted t- to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, This Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me but as soon as I screamed for help he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house when his master heard the story his wife told him saying this is how your slave treated me he burnt with he burned with anger Joseph's master took him and put him in prison the place where the king's prisoners were confined But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of a prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph. And gave him success in whatever he did. All right. 
quite the soap opera. Mm. Yeah. Right? So Joseph, based on his dreams, because remember he had had all these dreams about, you know, stocks of wheat bowing down and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, expected great things in his life. So how did this event look in comparison? It was definitely not a great thing. No. There was no, no way. No, no, nobody was bowing down to him. And, uh, you know, here he's been sold into slavery. He gets sold to somebody else. And, um, you know, he's kind of getting tossed around. And, and, and everything, every time every, things seem to be going well, bam. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't seem to have any opportunities to explain anything. It appeared as though, I've read that before, that he, he was just with some, what the wife told him, that was it. I mean, he didn't... I don't remember ever reading where he asked Joseph if that was true or anything like that. No, he didn't. But we will get... We'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Okay. Um, we'll look at that a little more closely. Have you ever expected great things to happen and then see events crumble around you? I think sometimes even something maybe as trivial or everyday as maybe planning a dinner or... A a weekend with your family or something and maybe you expect it to go a certain way and it doesn't and maybe you're disappointed. Okay. Yeah. I think or a Bible true. study or something and nobody comes or a family game night. And <laughs> <laughs> you plant something and nothing comes up? Uh, that, that has happened. <laughs> <laughs> a beans rotted in the ground last year. I know that's that's one thing for me that, you know, when I'm I'm planning something and 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 I want it to go whether it's like a Sunday morning service or or you know something that's much more um, much more involved or um, I can't say more important but you know something that where a lot more planning goes into it and and stuff like that and there's a lot of expectation and then you know boy if it falls flat you just it's it's devastating you just you know. And uh, and and just feel embarrassed and 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 you um, you just feel like oh man I you know I thought I had everything just right and you know and in place and then like when and, the pastor's mic drops <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you know you pick up the wrong order was, of service you know? <laughs> hello yeah there you go <laughs> well, how about this door hanger thing uh you know, all the months and all the things we passed out we haven't had one response yet yeah. You know yeah 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 I mean that's 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 shocking because you know I mean you would think at least at least one one person would have come right I yeah so far but do you think they may have came and you didn't know no they would have okay yeah they get so. a free yeah they get a free DVD, they get a free if, they DVD if they come yeah. so and I've, I've talked to pretty much everybody I mean we've had a lot of guests lately but I and I've talked to all of them and um and None of them have, have given any indication that, you know, was that one they of were one of those. Door hanger things. Um, it was it was completely unrelated. So, and yeah, so I I kind of boy, if we go through the whole year, and and don't get a single one, and then you know, as far I, I worry about our, our people are going to go, oh well, that was a lousy plan, or you know, or, <coughs> pastor wasted my money, and you know, or, yeah. or whatever, you know. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the year, you know, if you want, I mean, if you still wanted to stay with that program, you know, all you got to do is just take take the names right out of the, I mean, the the sales right out of the newspapers. I mean, you list them in the Sun newspapers, you list them in the Plain Dealers, you know, all of the sales in the North Ridge, uh, the Lyria Chronicle today had, had a list, there was like 20, I mean, I'm talking about all of North, I'm not talking about within a mile radius, but all you got to do is just take <coughs> <clears throat> addresses out of there they even have the names of the people who bought the thing sure. and where they bought them from you know and uh, you could you could you know save money on that and we could send cards out we could have co you know postcards made up of some you know what I mean and send it out and it'd be probably be a lot cheaper probably yeah. than going through through the th this particular service on a yeah. computer so yeah, it's a, so, it's I mean, a we could it's not, yeah, it we could be quite continue it if, if, year, but, you know. if they decide, if we decided to do it, it would be a lot less expensive, mm -hmm. I'm sure. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it's still the, you know, there's that sense of, of whether it's that or something else where you you really want it to go well, and then, you Yeah, know. I thought for sure at least one, yeah. you know. Well, I'll, I'll mean, give you another example when we had our... Almost, we almost did almost 
pretty close to 100 of them, probably 100 already. Yeah. Haven't had one response yet. Yeah. Maybe they're getting situated. Well, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's the other thing is you don't know that all of a sudden something happens and they show up, mm-hmm. you know, and it could be years later. Um, or, or a baby's born or... Or I'm waiting for the magnets to go on the on the refrigerators. Yeah. Yeah. So Okay, there you go. <laughs> Perfect <Thank> example. You. <laughs> Let me tell See? you, I was so afraid to tell them that the I was second one was, say that. was okay because you know, at if I, <laughs> I guess what, and this is exactly, Greg came into the house because he looked at it, you know, when he opened up the box and looked at it, and this is, he walks in the house and he goes, please don't kill the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at him and I said, well, it's too late for me to do anything about it now. Oh, well, I guess I'll be paying for those magnets. <laughs> well, you know, there's a, I've got I a had video 40 card people periphery them this yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you, I've got a video card sitting in the cabinet there that's completely useless to me. <laughs> and the one in there, I still haven't gotten to work. Although, you know, we're getting there. But, you know, but there there again is something where I'm just going, oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> you got to get it working because I'm in a throw knot mood. I've cleaned the narthex out so far. I'm working on the pew back there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I and I spent Bud's money to get that computer. <laughs> yeah, and we haven't used it yet. <laughs> so yeah, I should have called. Come on, <laughs> right? So yeah, that's you know this is this is how Joseph is feeling. You know, mm-hmm. There you on. go, boy. We, that really hit home there. Oh, right? see, but I you think it's, about it for a while. We had discussion about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, well, see, that's the way I feel about the sound system. I bet. Spend all these people's money and it's not working. That's not mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. If it was my money, I'd say, oh, well, you know, mm-hmm. you get what you pay for, you know, but mm-hmm. it's not my money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So. We didn't say how we responded. Oh, oh that's true. How'd you respond? Usually I, oh. I decided <laughs> I would never spend that much time planning and and preparing food for my family again. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I responded. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you you just buckled, opened your purse and paid for them, huh? So. <laughs> and let me tell you, do you know they reprinted them and we should get them next week and they're doing it for free. Super. Super. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> like we found a company that's going to get repeat business. <laughs> and get Only if you keep having me order this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Third time's the charm. <laughs> they probably just shook their head. <laughs> you know, church lady. <laughs> Well, not unless you can sell them to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they had a ready buyer. Oh, oh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> these, these magnets with the wrong phone number on. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, too, we got magnets on our refrigerator. I had no clue who they were from. We just hold pictures up, that's all. Yeah. And, that, and that was the point of getting those magnets. Yeah, dude. Because it was the whole thing started when... I had a, a magnet on my fridge that had some judge, elect some judge. Yeah, we did too. Right? I had no idea who this guy was. I looked him up online, and he lost the election like <laughs> six months ago. I still had his magnet up on the fridge. I had no idea who he was. I mean, he could have been a Klansman for all I know. You know? <laughs> That's where we, it just held the picture up. Where we All it counts. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't, by the way. <laughs> but, yeah. You know. um, but, yeah, that boy, magnets. People use those. That's right. <laughs> God, I got a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, when we moved here, we put all of our fridge magnets in a bag. They're still in the bag, but we're sort of slowly replenished. <laughs> we have a whole new crop of them. Yep. <laughs> so, all right. Um, oh, how, how do I, usually I, when things collapse, I go, oh, come on, God, help me out here. <laughs> and, and he often does. Things tend to work out all right, even when you think they're not going Sometimes to. Sometimes he even does it the way you want them to. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why do you think God allowed these trials to happen to Joseph? Well, I don't know that. 
Well, you know, he is getting um, to meet a lot of different people, <laughs> and every time he's like taken from a good situation to a bad, it's like, so everybody in that previous situation gets to know him and that he has a relationship with God, and now it's all the prisoners are going to know that he has a relationship with God. So it's like he's spreading the word, and it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That's no. true. Yeah, I wondered about this, the guy that he was indentured to, Paul, Potiphar? Potiphar, yeah. He, he knew that uh, that Joseph had a relationship with God, and that was one of the reasons that he promoted him so quickly. And then this man of God turned out, supposedly tried to go the bit of his life. I wonder... If anything ever happened that way okay yeah i don't know <clears throat> and that could have been a temptation type thing from you know if that god was tempting mm -hmm. him yeah but you look at you know joseph all right in in his sort of early years he's kind of arrogant and and he definitely learns humility through all this stuff mm -hmm. and so that by the time he's he's elevated to second in command to pharaoh by that point he's really humble even though he's just super super powerful uh -huh. you know and so that's really, you know, we, we see <coughs> what a positive impact all of these trials had on his life, mm -hmm. right? But also all of these things, one event leading to another, ends up saving the lives of countless people because of their being able to plan for the famine and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so we see God's hand in that. Um, and, and then he ends up being reconciled to his brothers, which never would have happened otherwise, I mean, there's just, there's all of these things where this stuff happens and it makes Joseph a better person and, and, it, and it, it just, it brings so much good to so many people through these trials and struggles. Mm -hmm. Almost like it was planned. Almost. Well, it was, but <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is you can almost see how it was planned is what I meant, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that that's the point is, is look at this. This is, this is so clear. Mm -hmm. That you know that this happened just the right way, that it wasn't by chance. <clears throat> um, all right. So, what methods does Potiphar's wife use to attempt to seduce Joseph? Verse seven, ten, and twelve. She was pretty straightforward. I was going to yeah. say she didn't sleep with me. Yeah, it wasn't an accident. She came right up, didn't she? Yeah. So, I'm so at first she just flat out says something to him. I don't know. She thought she. Could Make it like an order, or I don't know. yeah, <laughs> and you know, seductive. But you don't get the the sort of tone from the from the reading. How exactly did she say it, and how was she dressed, and what was her body language, and and all of that when she did it? You know, um, I I imagine that you know when when she said it. It could be that she was trying to sort of order him around, hey, I'm I'm your boss sort of thing. Um, although women in that culture, probably not. They weren't much higher than slaves. Hmm. Um, I wanted to ask you, did, do you do you have the sense that that, that was a common thing? That they, it's what they did? I think the men did then. Yeah, I have no I idea. wonder, I just wonder. I think mean, mm -hmm. for for a woman to go to a man like that, I think it would be pretty out of the ordinary. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I just wondered why he said that the ma his master gave him everything, but he didn't give me you. I don't know why he would even. Does that mean they talked about it before? Or? I, I think the point was was look, I'm in charge of all of this stuff, all right, and 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 I can do whatever I want with it because he trusts me, mm -hmm. right? I can't do whatever I want with you though. And, okay, um, you know. and I think probably to protect protect himself to keep her from being angry with him, he probably had to make it look like well he just couldn't even no matter how much he might want to, because the master said no you can't do that. Right, right. I can't so, disobey your husband. That's right. You know. But it didn't work though. No. No, no. Because you look at what she do day after day. She keeps doing it. You know, mm -hmm. she's trying to wear him down. And he didn't go to his master and tell him. Well, look, no, look but, what your wife is doing to me, you know. Right, but you know, if you think about it, he was in a difficult position there. Yeah, I'm not sure that would have been wise. Because, no, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, because she would then, have, she would have accused him then. Anyway. Right, right, and and who's who's he gonna believe? Yeah, you know, and and how do you go? How do you go to someone? You know, basically, you're saying, hey, 
your wife is a lying, cheating whore, you know? <laughs> Sorry. But, I mean, essentially, okay. Well, he might believe that it. Word in the Bible he might even believe it. But he's not going to do anything about it because that makes him look bad. Right, right. Because if he, if he would side with them, then he's agreeing she is, and he's married to. Yeah, right, he right. Can't what do does that, that say? Well, yeah, All right. Um, so so then uh, finally in in twelve she just grabs him. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of this. <laughs> so yeah, boy, what a interesting person. Um, <laughs> right. So how does he counter each one? Right. We talk about this the first time he. Um, you know, he says, oh, well, I can't disobey my master. I'm, I'm, I'm loyal to your husband, you know, um, and, and I have to do what he says, right? So then she does it day after day, and, um, and uh, so he didn't listen to her, or, you know, it was sort of, like, he just sort of avoided her. Um <laughs> He didn't listen to her or lie, uh, oh, listen to her to, to lie beside her or, or be with her, you know. Um, you, you sort of imagine, well, okay, fine. Just just like lay down here. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do anything. Just, yeah. But it looks like he avoided being alone with her because yeah. it specifically says that, that this time there was no one there. Yeah. Yeah, this time there was no one there. And, you, you know, you just automatically, yeah. Yeah. Wow, what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. She gave everybody the day off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, now, here's the interesting... Oh, in oh, and the, and the last one, she grabs him. What does he do? He leaves his garment behind. That was kind of... That doesn't make too much sense, does it? Well, you know, if he, you, you don't imagine that she went... And he went, throw my clothes out, you know. It was probably like, hey... You, you know, and, and she had a good grip or something, and, and finally he's like, fine, I'm not going to let this happen. And now, you know, interesting thing about sexual sin. The Bible tells us to stand up against all kinds of sin, except for sexual sin. It says to flee from it. Oh. In various places, we're not told. As far as I know, I've, I've never found a place in Scripture that tells you to, to stand up, to take a stand against sexual sin. It's always flee from it. Wow. And I figure God knows us well enough to know that this is not something you're <clears throat> going to try to take a stand because if you do, you'll lose. Um, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And and if you look at our, our society, so much of, of the people clamoring for, <clears throat> for rights and privileges and everything else, how much of that revolves around some kind of sexual sin. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, whether it's abortion, gay marriage, um, uh, all the, I mean, just strange things going on with cohabitation laws. and I mean, just, I mean, just, there's just all kinds of stuff going on and, and so much of it revolves around sexual sin of some kind, right? Because we give into it so easily. And, um, not speaking for myself. <laughs> well, well she, I didn't think so. It, it seems like it's either that or drugs in one way or another. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, so here's the question. This sort of leads to what Bud was asking before. Does Potiphar believe his wife? Well, he punishes Joseph. Let's put it that way. He punishes Joseph. He has to, I think. Right. And notice what it says. He burned with anger. Yes, in 19. His anger burned. Against whom? <clears throat> Maybe his wife. Yeah, it doesn't say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's mad, but it doesn't say he's mad at Joseph. Right? Mm -hmm. He throws her in prison. The penalty for what she was accusing Joseph of is death. Oh. But he throws him in prison instead. 
Mm. Right. He's mad because he's got this awesome manager. That's interesting. <laughs> now he's got to do something. He's got else. this great employee that that manages all of his stuff, and he can just kick back and relax because this guy handles all of his business for him. Does it great. He can trust him, you know, and and he's not worried that that he's gonna take advantage of him or or rebel against him or plot against him or anything. You know, it's, it's a great thing. And then his cheating wife messed it up. You know, and and he's got to know if if she's like this. No. I mean, I'm sorry, but you can't have that sort of an attitude. You know, he's heard murmurings from, you know, he's overheard servants talking about it or something, you know, and is just sort of hoping that, you know, well, I trust Joseph and, you know. He'll just keep avoiding her, and I won't have to deal with it. So he probably is mad, because now he has to do all that work. Yeah. Yeah. Where am yeah. I going to find somebody to replace Joseph? Yeah. Because I'm not going to be able to I have this, this great Hebrew slave. Hebrew slaves at that point are pretty tough to come by. Mm -hmm. All right? And, and this one in particular, he's really trustworthy. Huh. This guy's... I'm wondering if she had not made a big to do with the uh, other people she said that she told the men or somebody if she hadn't made it so public you know he might have been able to get away without punishing oh, Joseph but yeah. she spread it all over the place so now he either makes her look bad which probably dishonors him and right. so yeah he's between a rock and a hard place. Right. So he's stuck. So he does the best he can do. He doesn't want Joseph killed because that would not be just. Uh, it's not really just to throw him in prison, but, you know, unless he has some sort of proof, which, frankly, he doesn't really want to find because, I, you know, okay, I, I don't want to have to um, have my wife put to death. And so what do I do here? And so he does sort of the Potiphar does the best he can with with the situation and with what he has. <clears throat> but yeah, he's mad. <laughs> How can you do this to me? All right, you know. Plus all the you think about the, all of the the sense of betrayal and everything that he's feeling. That you know maybe he's heard the rumors or whatever, but gone. <laughs> no, you know, sort of. I won't believe it unless um, unless there's proof. You know, and I'm just gonna sort of close my ears to it and and not not believe that this kind of thing is going on and and just chalk it up to rumors or, or you know whatever. And now it's it's, it's, it's thrown right in his face. Mm -hmm. ah. Can't just ignore it anymore. All right. So where do you see Jesus in this narrative? Jesus went through those basically the same stuff during right. the, before the crucifixion yeah yeah he was falsely accused mm -hmm. um, and except him he was actually sentenced to death you know and and you also look at you know the way Jesus was falsely accused and the guy that sentenced him didn't want to do it mm -hmm. all right um all right, any other questions about uh, first, uh, chapter 39? Or do we knock that thing off quick? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, chapter 40. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended the their man. Stick <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to resist. <laughs> offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of e and the baker of the king of Egypt, okay. who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meeting of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, Why are your faces so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. 
So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream, I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position, and you'll put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. For I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for the pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. Three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and hang you on a tree, <laughs> and the birds will eat away your flesh. <laughs> now, the third <laughs> Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position, so that he once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had said to them in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. I think I think that Chief Baker made up his dream, <laughs> and Joseph goes on oh, okay. <laughs> this is what I have to do. You want to make up stuff? <laughs> you know, the, it, it's interesting that the the dreams were so similar. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know that they had such a drastically different interpretation. All right. So what do you? Th why do you think that Joseph asked to interpret their dreams? They're not, in, they're, they're not interpretations belong to God. Okay, all right. He sort of had a history with dreams. Mm -hmm. All right. So so he knew that um, he knew you know that sort of people around him they dream there tends to be some significance to it. What if so. he knew that the Pharaoh's birthday was in three days? I would assume everybody in the land knew that. That's probably it was silly. probably a national holiday. Yeah, that's probably mm -hmm. a silly question. Okay, but he didn't know that's what Pharaoh was going to do on his birthday. <clears throat> no, mm -hmm. of course not. No. Well, he could have also been wanting to interpret them to give glory to God, and or to hope that there might be some good or some thing that would happen in his favor. Well, he seems to be, you know, the fact that he says, okay, so when you're elevated up and all that kind of stuff, remember me. Yeah, don't let me languish here. He probably yeah. Pharaoh forgot about me. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he, did. he didn't put, he <laughs> wasn't the one that put him in prison. It was Potiphar. Right, yeah, Potiphar's not going to get me out. So, but if you put in a good word with Pharaoh, you know. Um, so, but obviously there's something going on here that he, um, He's not just sort of like hoping that one of these guys is restored. I mean, clearly God has revealed to him the meaning of these dreams. Because otherwise, he would say something good to both of them. Those are pretty drastic uh, interpretations, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, without some advanced knowledge, that's, right, that's yeah. pretty weird to you come know, this out is, like that. This is like, you know, you, you get these sort of like... Um, sort of astrologists and, you know, and that, that, that do dream interpretations. Yeah. It's like... Well, you're going to encounter, uh, you're going to make a new friend. And I'm like, well, that could be anything. You're going to go on a long trip. You know, it's like fortune cookie kind of stuff. Yeah, but here yeah. he's saying, in three days you can get out of prison to get your job back. Well, that's pretty it's, that's dramatic pretty, and to yeah. the point. Yeah. And then the other guy, three days you're going to get your head cut off. I mean. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be hanged. Yeah, so, yeah. it's pretty tough. And yeah. The, you have and, to have some advanced knowledge to do something like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, clearly this is God revealed this stuff to him. There's, there's no way that that he could have just sort of guessed. Guessed, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he could have broken the news a little bit better. <laughs> <than> he... <laughs> yeah, your head's gonna be <laughs> <Yeah>. all right. 
I got some good news yeah. and some bad news. I don't know you are bad. <laughs> the yeah. good news is I have the answer to your question. <laughs> yeah. The bad news is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how do you understand the cup error for getting Joseph? Well, I, I think that that has something to do with well, it has something to do with a, some books I've read, but it has something to do with people who say, God, you get me out of this and I'll, <laughs> you know, whatever. You promise anything, you know, and then uh, it happens and they, for, they forget, yeah. you know. It's something like that, you know. Yeah. They, they got what they wanted and forget it. Yeah, yeah, we do. We tend to do that. We sort of, we're in a bind and you know, we go we go crying to God and, and say, God, help me out. And, yeah, I mean, you know, they and, say the prisons are full of Christians, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about that part, but they claim it. And if they get out, they forget and they go back into the crimes. Mm -hmm. I would have interpreted that, you know, the, the you know the, the cupbearer, you know, got what he wanted to get. You know, why would you want to bring somebody into the picture? I mean, he's happy now. Right. You know. And not only that, how often are you going to sort of take a, um, a you know, why, make a recommendation you, yeah. of somebody who's in prison? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he may have been somebody that helped you out, but you know, to to endorse a prisoner, yeah, you know, like well, and if I ask him for trouble, yeah, because if, you know? if I tell if I tell Pharaoh this is a good guy, and then he ends up going and you know, well, I guess you're going back to prison, <laughs> yeah, yeah, seduces Pharaoh's <laughs> wife or something like yeah. that, you know, yeah, uh, boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think about that once in a while. I, yeah. um, if I've, I've got a couple of friends who are um, pastors that were like they're kicked out of their church or something like that, and and you know I know these guys well enough that, um, and and they shared with me their their situation as they were kind of going through it and stuff, and where they were trying to, um, kind of turn things around and 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 bring some good, and the congregation sort of dying, and they're trying to bring things up but people don't want to change or whatever and, and, and they're frustrated and stuff and 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 so um so I know that they need to get out of there and so I'd sort of pass on their name to the district president or something like that. I always have to kind of stop and think, okay, how well do I know these guys? <laughs> Before I pass on their name, you know. Yeah. Um you know, not that not that if, you know, district president recommends them to the congregation they call him and then you know something bad happens it's not like the district president's going to come back to me and yeah. go hey and Pastor Dale yeah. told me, uh -huh. <laughs> right. but at the same time you know if somebody else if i'm if i'm going to recommend somebody else and i've lost my credibility then mm. i'm not going to be able to help out that other person you know mm. and uh so all right um what significance do you give to dreams not much, except to the one that I had. Oh, yeah. Had, so. Personally. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if a long time that I, I jumped, I, I, I knew, I had two different ways I was going to die. Okay. One one was that, um, that I was going to die in a fire, but th that went by the wayside. And the more room that I had was I, I went into a, I get, went off, you know, the bridge in the car, and I kept sinking down, and I kept trying to swim to the surface, and I never made it. And and then then the, the one then the one that really startled me was I couldn't get out of my seatbelt. You know, I couldn't get out of the seatbelt, and I died because I couldn't get out of my seatbelt. I mean, I could I kicked the windshield out and everything, but I couldn't get out of the seatbelt. And I wouldn't wear a seatbelt for anything <laughs> until they imposed the law. You know, they, when they first they had to pull you over for an offense before they could do that, right? Uh -huh. Never wore a seatbelt. But then when the grandkids, I started taking the grandkids, uh, Grandpa, how come you're not putting your seatbelt on? You know. Uh -huh. <laughs> but anyway, but I wear a seatbelt now all the time. Yeah. But I haven't had a dream like that for years. So it didn't come true, huh? No, no, no not yet. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down if I'm here and you go. I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the car, in the water, and I'll have to see both stuck on you. <laughs> I, for me, the I I don't dream all that much, but at least not that I remember. My the, the I have a recurring dream though that um and and it it. it 
it varies, but it's it's always basically the same thing, and 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 it's that it's like fifteen minutes past the start of service, and and <laughs> and you know, and, and I'm still not ready, and things are just like <laughs> not going in, you know, falling into place or whatever. I'm waiting for something, or I forgot something, you know, or whatever, and, and it's that kind of thing that, um, and uh, and, it, and it happens the most if if there's something where I like need to remember something or, you know, or, um, I'm, I'm not quite done with something or whatever. And, and, and so it, that's just, I mean, I, I look at those dreams and I go, Oh, that's just because I'm, that's just my sort of worry. That's, mm-hmm. you know, expressing itself and yeah. the job get to you. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I was working at McDonald's, I used to have dreams about, Hamburgers. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I dreamed that we had a lobby full of people waiting to order, and we were and out of couldn't. food. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like every every job I've ever had, I've I've had those sort of nightmares about it. That you know, the worst possible thing happened. You know. So. I still dream about forgetting my locker combination and not being prepared for a test. You know, and while I'm having the dream, I'm going, okay, it's been decades since you've been in school. <laughs> <laughs> this is only a dream. But Mallory had a dream yesterday that I fell down three flights of stairs and had open heart surgery. And she tried calling and my phone was off because we were in church. So this dream woke her up and she called to see if I was okay. And then she panicked because my phone was off. So then she (laughs) called the hospital. And I said, okay, well, number one, we don't have three flights of stairs in our house. (laughs) Where I work, they don't have three flights of stairs. I'm okay. (laughs) So I, I had a, I had a dream last night, but I know it's not true, and I, I kind of woke up disappointed um, because I, I dream well. I, I dream that I saw my dad. And, I've done um, that too. I've seen my dad, my mom. Yeah. And, and I was, and it was like, and there was something in the dream where I was like, I was gonna get to see him like once a month or something like that, and I was so happy, and mm-hmm. and then I woke up and I went, oh, it was only a dream, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and and not that I should have expected that it was real, you know. But, but it you was, just remember the good feeling. It was yeah, yeah. That you have. yeah. And mm-hmm. so Which is a good thing. But did you yeah. ever did you ever communicate? I could never communicate. I would be yelling at my mom, you know, Hey mom, hi, oh, how really? you doing? And she, I, but she would never they uh, would never talk back to you. Yeah, no, we were I we mean were it talking. was like it like you know, I mean there was no conversation between. I mean I saw her and I was hollering to her, but yet she wasn't responding mm-hmm. back. Yeah. And that was that was annoying because, <laughs> <laughs> because well, I thought at least she'd say you know well, hi Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know and that was probably just your you know wishing that you could talk to her and that you know yeah and you know most of the time when we dream something it's just a reflection of something that's going on in our head it's our brain subconscious out. mind yeah. I think I dream every night but it's always about something that's going on like yeah I dreamt last night yesterday this is very weird my my uh, one of my uncles and his wife would just put in an assisted living place. And it's one of them places that you go in when you can have your own room and then you gradually go mm-hmm. over your anyway. Anyway, his boy is going through all the things in their in their house. And th- this is my, my uncle whom parents I my mom and dad had to drag me from from there, you know, when I was a kid. I spent more time there than I did at home. And uh, and then my grandmother <laughs> eventually came to live with us and then my grandmother after uh, uh, after uh, when we lived in Ridgeville she stayed kind to stay with us six months at a time so I was really very close to my grandmother so anyway my nephew who was going through his parents things found this photograph and it couldn't determine who the photograph was and it was his grandmother my grandmother her husband holding a baby and he sent it to me and oh my gosh, it's just, I mean, I almost, you? yeah, because it's the same churchyard I remember playing in. It's got the same brick in it, the same dirty cracks from Pittsburgh that <laughs> they always had. It's got the same <laughs> church in the background, big stone church that we attended, and the, and the same brick building that was the parsonage that we lived in, they lived in. And they're holding a baby that is about three or four months old, and he took it to his dad. To find out who it was, and it was in 1937. It's me. <laughs> Weird, and and I don't have any pictures of my grandfather except that one. Oh, wow. And so anyway, I dream about anything that happens that I'm doing or happen. I dream about that stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it, you know, just talking about dreams, it just occurred to me now the dream that I had about my dad. I've been thinking a lot about him lately, <laughs> um, just because as we're getting ready for the adoption and all that stuff, and I'm thinking about he never got a chance to meet his granddaughter, mm. and and the way she loves men, <laughs> and the way that like everybody that ever met him loved him, just and he just like had this gift Super. that they would have hit it off so well. Mm. Oh, that's great. And um. But now, you know, it that he knows, happen. you know. But you know, and I, you know, I, I talk a lot about how, boy, you know, when Jesus comes back, man, they're just gonna be. <laughs> 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 so at least you know, I've I've got the comfort of knowing that it's not that that he'll never get to meet her. He will. Yes. You know, and um, but just not as soon as I'd like. Uh-huh. But I've been thinking a lot about that lately. And, so mm-hmm. that's, I'm sure that that's what sort of sparked that. It dream. must be because that's what happens to me. It's things that are going on at the time. Mm-hmm. If I'm building something, I build it all night long. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, I've all, always been that way. The worst dream for me, every once in a while I have this dream that I get up in the morning. <laughs> 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 and I get up and I get all ready and everything. And, 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 and I'm tired and I sort of drag myself out of bed and everything. And... And then my alarm goes off. <laughs> <laughs> and I wake up and I go, oh, I've got to do it all no. again. <laughs> you just did it. <laughs> all right. Uh, where do you see, this is this might, might be a little tougher, where do you see Jesus in this narrative? Okay. On the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, is that it? <laughs> Well, it's three days. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. It might be a little stretch. I don't know if you um, could... <laughs> it's just I'm just being silly. Yeah, know. but Friday, Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, what, you know, you have one guy that was sort of elevated up. The other guy was killed on that day. I, I, I look at this, and we actually kind of already talked about this, and um, that as... God, the way that, um, um, you know, where Joseph provided the the word from God to this guy and, and gave him this great blessing, and then the guy just completely ignored him and forgot about him. And, and I look at that, and we already talked about that, but, you know, we do the same thing. Oh. You know, the way that the cupbearer treated Joseph is the same way that we treat Jesus so often. Mm-hmm. That he he gives us these blessings and we just we don't recognize him as the givers we we don't um, we don't glorify him we don't return you know praise to him after after he reveals that to us so all right well we're at eight o'clock so why don't we stop here and we'll we'll do uh, forty one next time um, along with the next section. Right, let's close this prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for your presence, for, for revealing yourself to us uh, in your Son, and, and for all the, the blessings you give to us. Help us to recognize that you are the giver of all good gifts, and um, to, to glorify you and praise you for those things, and to tell other people about the good things that you've done for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.